yeah, great college baseball game. Um, hats off to the pitching on both sides. Um, they got a clutch hit uh, there at the end, and we did not um, get ready to go tomorrow. Okay, let's open it up for questions for the student athletes first. And uh, remember to raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. Claire, we have up right up here. Uh, Trey, um, just what were you seeing in the eighth inning there as you tried to score from um, third base? Yeah, um, we were in uh, red, which means I go on contact. As soon as the ball was hit, I uh, took off. I knew he was going to have like an awkward throw, so I kind of tried to get a little bit uh, over to get in the way, but um, he made a great play. Yeah, remember to give your name and affiliation. Okay, right back here, Jay. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. Ty, you were grooving there, and then you run into a little bit of trouble. I guess what, what did what were you feeling? What did you see at that moment? Yeah, I mean, it's part of it. I think sometimes you get out of a groove a little bit and stuff. But uh, I think I lost a little bit of command. I think I uh, got a little tired and stuff. But um, I know Thatcher came in and did his job and allowed us to be able to stay in the game right there toward the end. Okay, Leah. <coughs> Ty, you had one of your best outings all year um, in the biggest stage. I mean, what are kind of your emotions since you ended up losing this game? I mean, my main, my, our main focus is win and stuff. I know I hate that we lost, but at the same time, I know that tomorrow we're going to come back hotter than ever. We got all the motivation in the world to win tomorrow. Okay, next question. Bye. Yeah, Trey, um, just from a batter's perspective, what were they doing a good job of keeping you off balance with? Uh, yeah, they were mixing pitches really well, going in and out, um, executing their plan. We were also uh, trying our best to execute our plan. Um, I feel like we put a lot of pressure on them when we needed to. Uh, it just didn't work out for us in the end. Okay, right here, Claire. Yeah, uh, this would be for Trey and Ty, Glenn West, go 247. Um, I mean, First time this postseason, your guys' backs are kind of against the wall here. Just how do you think this season-long grind and journey has kind of prepared you for what you got coming here in the next couple of days? Trey, you start. Okay. Yeah, um, nothing changes for us um, mentally. Uh, we always go out there and try to win one pitch at a time. Uh, we always play like it's our last time playing the game. Uh, so we're going to show up uh, tomorrow, show up tomorrow and keep the same mentality, play like it's our last time playing together. Ty. Yeah, I think that's what makes postseason baseball so exciting and stuff, that a lot of people's backs are against the wall and stuff. But uh, I know we've been here. No, this postseason we haven't been here, but I know we're going to come out hot tomorrow and stuff. And I know that we're going to do our plan tomorrow. We're going to execute all we can. Okay, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron Fit, D1 Baseball. Ty, I know fastball is kind of your – your bread and butter, and it seemed like you had a good one tonight. Was this as good as your fastball has been, and especially against a lineup like this, how were you able to have so much success with it? Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me this uh, this outing and stuff was to locate my off-speed uh, pitches early in the counts and my changeup and slider and curveball. But uh, I know that my fastball is my best pitch and stuff, so late in the count, I know I can throw the ball in the top of the zone to be able to get strikeouts or outs late in the game. Okay, album for Mike. Trey, I know you're not going to tell us what he said, but what's the Cliff Notes version of that team meeting at the end of the game there? Um, short version is uh, keep doing what we've been doing all season. Like I said, we go out there every time and our plan is to win one pitch at a time. Um, as a team, like I said, we go out there and play together like it's our last time playing the game. So nothing changes. Um, we're in a different position now, obviously, but our mental is still great. Um, we're going to shut out tomorrow. Okay. Any more questions for the student athletes? If not, guys, uh, you can go. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. Jay, Tennessee will be the home team going on. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, let's open it up for questions for Jay, and we'll start right here. Coach. Uh, Cokie Riley. Name, with the a, name and affiliation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cokie Riley with the Lafayette Advertiser. Um, I, I was sort of curious. Were you managing this game in part thinking of the fa of the possibility of you know maybe ha with there being extra games and having to save a couple arms for uh, later in the tournament at all, or or is that not part of your thinking at all? We were trying to win the night. 
with our best two guys that we had available. And they both pitched fantastic. Okay. Right up here in front. Jay, uh, Wilson Alexander from the Advocate. For the long version, maybe, what was what do you, do you want the guys to hear from you there in the dugout before y'all dispersed onto the bus? Yeah, I think um, it'd be very easy to uh, crawl into a hole with disappointment. That was a great college baseball game that we came up on the short end of the stick. Um, you know, it really came down to um, Wilkin hit a ball up the middle with no outs and got the guy in from third, and then he made a heck of a play on that play. And, um, and then they got a RBI hit. Um, there in the eighth and and we didn't when we had our, our one chance right there um so that could be deflating but i shared with them two things number one i've had a team in this position before lost a 1-0 heartbreaker to oklahoma state and won three consecutive games to play for a national championship then the very next year of this program did the same thing and they beat probably one of the best teams in modern college baseball history twice to get that opportunity and i have all the faith in the world and our team that we can do that so let's stick to what we do. And if we do that well, then uh, we'll be in a good spot. Here, go back to Matt here and then. <clears throat> Coach, Matt Talgary from World Baseball Network. Does his microphone work? So, Can you hear me? Okay, now. Okay, Coach, Matt Talgary from World Baseball Network. Uh, tonight, um, around 13 strikeouts offensively. What's it going to take for you guys to just bounce back? in the box tomorrow and, and hope to have a good offensive production against Tennessee's pitching staff. Yeah, I mean, the, the teams that are here, you know, uh, particularly the two that we've played, uh, are, they're the two premier pitching staffs in college baseball. And, uh, you know, Josh Hartle's really good, really good. And, um, you know, preparing for this game, you know, we knew he would present a challenge. And I, I thought our guys battled him pretty good. I thought they did. Yeah, I mean, he's really hard to square up. Um, he executed pitches, you know, down in the zone, both sides of the plate, you know, as, as Trey mentioned, and we put some pressure on him. Um, it wasn't a great night to hit either with the wind blowing in and uh, a good pitcher going, and we benefited from that early in the game too with Ty. Um, but I have zero concerns about these guys preparing well, coming in and competing and executing our plan. We're going to have to do it against Drew Beam, who's one of the best pitchers in the country. And... Um, so it'll be a really good challenge, and uh, we're going to have to be ready for it. Yep, go to Leah up here. Leah Van, Baton Rouge Advocate. Coach, what were you seeing from these Wake Forest pitchers that were kind of um, throwing off the hitting tonight? Well, I mean, with Hartle, it's four pitches for strikes. Roland has a great breaking ball. Obviously, he came in and, and struck the first two guys out he faced. Massey's got a big arm. Um, and, I mean... Made a great pitch to Cade. You know, you have to send the runner there, so we stay out of the double play. And um, he I mean, has a heck of a play by Wilkin. I mean, if it skips or if, if he throws it and bounces off Trey, we're ahead 3-2, and we probably have runners on second and third. Um, so, again, you know, in championship environments, as we said in our game on Saturday, your dudes have to be dudes, and, and he was a dude on that tonight. Um, but good bullpen. Those guys are, are really tough, and there's a reason they've only lost 10 games all year with the starting pitching they have and the bullpen they have. Mike? Yeah, just kind of following up on that. Trey said it was a red situation all the way, I guess. Just what did, what did you see? Did Josh tell you anything afterwards? or is, is No, it's a, it's a ground ball we are going because if he doesn't go, then we're going to hit into a double play, and it makes it really difficult. Now you have a man on third standing there with um, two outs. Now you need a base hit. So it's, it's very simple baseball, actually. And again, I mean, I don't know that Cade Veloso's hit a ground ball to third base the entire season. And so you have to tip your hat to Massey for executing the 2-0 pitch that he did and got him to swing through, and then the 2-1 pitch. Okay, any more questions for Jay? Yeah, yeah back here. Zach Ewing from The Advocate. What, what's the pitching plan for tomorrow and, and then going forward, knowing you have three in a row? Yeah. We have nine guys available to pitch tomorrow, and we'll choose one of them, and he'll get guys out for as long as he can, and then we'll go to the next guy, 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 we'll the next guy until we figure out how to get 27 outs against a really good team. Okay. Any more questions for Jay? Okay, sir. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks. Careful. Yeah.